All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about the concept of content collision and a way to avoid that when you've got a mix of copy, images, etc., uh, in a section. Uh, now, in this example here, I've got a basic hero. Uh, we've got a background texture of these hexagons in a section. I've got a left column here, we've got a heading, some copy, and a button. And on the right hand side, I've got a cutout of a girl with a lollipop. And if I move my width of my screen in, what we see is that the width of the left-hand box decreases, as you can see by the text wrapping, but the girl stays around about the same distance from the right of that copy the whole time. So if we go down, we go down, she's still the same distance from that copy. Uh, we then get to a break point here at 767 down here, we can see that girl actually moves across. If we look at the actual uh, uh, girl here, she's actually overlapping the text. But it's okay for this particular image with that copy because of the cutout we've got with this girl where her head is lining up with that. Uh, it works really well, so we can still get to see this girl peeking out off the side of the screen. Uh, and we can still read the copy here. And even when we go down to mobile sizes, uh, it's... Uh, working really, really well for us here. Okay, we get a little bit of collision when we get to there, the washing at that particular point there. I don't know if we can have mobiles at that point. So we get to say 390, like an iPhone. Uh, we got the G just clearing the side of that. That's okay. Uh, and we can still see this girl peeking out from the side here. So I think that's a reasonable sort of a compromise. Uh, the other thing that happens is that when we get to a certain point, so we'll keep going along here, this box here, stays the same width. So we don't want it to be too wide. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of things. If we turn off a couple of things on here. Uh, if we head back up to where so my left dials. So if I turn off my width on that box there, see how it's gone all the way across and it's disappearing behind this girl. Now, even if we put the Z index on that, Z index of two, uh, you can see the copy is now sitting on top of the girl, but it's just not readable uh, because it's clashing with the color of the girl. So it doesn't make any sense uh, to do it this way. It makes more sense to make sure that these two never collide. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're doing with that. So if I look at the left column here, so that's my left hero column there. I'm going to look at my computer style. See how it's got 650, watch my mouse, I'm going to click here, down the bottom right, I've got 650 pixels wide. And if I expand my screen, it stays at 650 pixels wide. So it never goes bigger than that. Otherwise, we end up with a really long line of text. And you can see the girl stays relative to the end of that uh, column or the edge of that column there. Uh, when I get below a certain point, you see this starting to drop. So I'm at 626 there as I drop down, 603. Uh, you can see it shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And, um, and then um, at this point here, it sticks to 650 and won't go any bigger. So I think that's a real reasonable compromise for this copy and that image. So let's look at how that's actually built. Uh, this is a little trick I got from the guys at uh, Wimax CSS, looking at how they, with frames I should say, uh, how uh, they were organizing their CSS. And when you have an element that you've got some custom CSS on it, good to put in brackets uh, CSS, just as a reminder that that's where you put your CSS. Um, now, I know Bricks has a class system where you can select a class and you can go in and add your CSS to that class. I don't recommend doing that when you've got these BEM structures here where you've got multiple related classes. You might even have some pseudos uh, on there. Um, it makes more sense to have all the CSS in one place rather than spread out throughout the uh, elements, otherwise you got to go to each element and figure out what CSS has been done on that particular element. So for my liking, I like to stick it all in the one place. So here is all of my CSS just here. 
that makes all this work. So in the one place. So the structure is we've got a section. So add a section on that section. I've added a class which gives me a background pattern, uh, which is not related to this uh, what we're talking about here. Um, and then I've got a test container. So that's actually the container that gives me my box. So if we look here, that's giving me my box width here uh, of I think yep 1100 pixels uh, box width um, and everything. So the the container on the left uh, and the girl on the right is all positioned within that container. So let's have a look at that. The, then we've got the hero test left, uh, and that is basically this column here, which I think is a block. It is. Uh, I generally use a block. If I'm going to use flex, uh, then I don't have to worry about setting flex properties. So you can use a div and set it to flex, but if we use a block, basically flex with 100%. So then we just got our heading basic and button uh, inside that. Um, and then we've got our hero test right wrapper. Now, and that's positioned um, at a absolute position, which is relevant to this container, the edge of this container. So we can see the edge of that container uh, plus the width of the left hand container plus an offset of 50 pixels. So you can see the girl is 50 pixels away from the edge of that. So that's how that's created. Um, now I put it inside, I could have just put that on the actual image, uh, but the reason I put it inside a wrapper is because we might want to put other things inside that that are going to be positioned relative to this girl. So that could be a background a texture, a background blur, could be anything that you like. That's the structure, the CSS. So basically, root refers to our hero test class for our uh, section. Uh, we've got a couple of variables for our left width, oh, and that's the left container width. I probably should have said left wrapper width. Um, so that's that container for the copy and the button. Uh, and what I'm saying here is set it to whichever is the minimum value of 60% of that container width or 650 pixels. So what that means is that if, let's say we'll drag that in and we say we get to left here. So at this point here, say 604 pixels is 60% of that width. But when we get a bit bigger than that, we get to 650 pixels. So 650 pixels is the smaller uh, value than 60% of that width. So as we go up, it sticks to fit 650 because 650 is the maximum width we want to go to. So it's a weird one for people because like you're thinking, okay, well, that's the maximum we want to go to, uh, but you use the min um, function to get that. So it's the minimum value of these two. So take the least of these two values and that's the one that we want it to be. So if that's greater than that, use this. That's pretty much what it's saying. All right, then we want to write offset, which is how far we want this box with the girl to be away from the right hand edge of that uh, column there, the left column. No float are hidden, so when our girl goes off screen here, we don't end up with a uh, overflow and a um, scroll bar. Um, because my sections by default have padding top and bottom, I've taken the padding top and bottom off that without touching the sides because I do have a, on all of my sections, they do have, I think, a 16 pixel um, padding on the sides um, to give us a, when we're on mobiles, we don't end up with copy going right to the edge. So here, I don't have to worry about adding extra padding. Uh, I know I've always got enough padding on the edges of that. So that's the reason for that. Okay, now here's a cool part of the way of doing this when you're using these variables. For your media queries, you don't need to do a media query for your classes and change what the class is doing. You can do a media query and just change what the variables are doing that these classes use. And I like, I like that because it's very clean. So down here, what we're saying is that up to a maximum width of 767 pixels, we want the left width to be 80% instead of 60%, all right? And we want the right offset to be minus 40 pixels instead of positive 50 pixels. Let's have a look at that. See this girl here? 
that image there, that box by my mouse over, see it's overlapping the text uh, because this box is actually minus 40 pixels from the right hand edge of that column there. And we can do that with this particular image because of this cutout. Uh, if this image had color going all the way up that edge, we can't do this. But in this particular case, it's okay for us to have a negative amount of space between that box and that copy uh, because it wraps around with the cutout anyway. So it works for this particular image and that particular copy. And this is something you just have to play with by going in here. You might go, okay, well, okay, at that point there, I mean, I don't think you worry about a device at 366 pixels, but if you did, I would look at this box go back to this box actually i think we put those classes we did we put them on the actual um hero test because we're actually just uh we're doing so by default it's at the uh, max with the 767 we're changing this um right offset so i'd make that say minus 30. oh what happened there so if we make minus 30 see now we're right up against the G. We make it minus, say, 25. Now we're a little bit away from the G, but the girl's disappeared off to the side there. So it's whatever you want for that image is uh, that works for you. I like it at minus 40. That so gives us more of this girl peeking off the side here. And when we get down to here, I mean, the reality is, look, if we go to an iPhone 12, uh, you know, that's going to clear that content anyway. So, and we still see more of this girl there. So I, th I think that's a pretty reasonable compromise there anyway. But uh, that's, uh, that's how you figure out what those numbers should be. All right, now let's look at the actual application of these variables. So the first one is the hero test container. So that is the outer container the boxed container here. So this whole container here, there, that's containing our, our left-hand column and the girl, um, that there is our hero test container. And we want that to be positioned relative so that when we position that girl, absolutely, it's relative to the edge of that container because that container is your relative uh, parent. So this girl is going to be relative to that width of that box plus 50 pixels from the left. Okay. All right. And we're going to set the minimum height to 500 pixels. This works because of this image, um, which I'm aligning to the bottom. Um, and it's um, with the height of that, I wanted a little bit of clearance above her head. Um, and the minimum of 500 pixels just worked for me. You're going to add some text in here, some extra copy in here, it gets bigger and bigger. She moves down, we get more space above her, uh, but it still works for us. Okay, all right. So that is the reason we have the minimum height. Justify the content of the center, that's moving this box here. Uh, so that's our left to the center. If we set that to flex in, it's going to stick it at the bottom with the padding of 80. So it's going to be 80 away from the bottom there. If we set it to fix start, it's going to stick it at the top, which is 80 pixels away from the top because of this uh, padding top and bottom for that um, container there. So I'm going to put that in the center again. And we want that centered there. Okay, that's really straightforward CSS. So we don't talk about that too much. Hero text left. So what we want is a left width variable for our width. And that is the minimum of 650 pixels or 60% of the width of that container. That's pretty simple, right? Now, because we made it a block, it's already got flex. But we just need to set the row gap on that to give us our... Uh, gap or spacing between the heading copy and button so that's really minimal CSS there and our right wrapper position absolute right and remember we made the section up here we made the uh, this inner container here we made that position relative so that 
it, this box is positioned absolute with respect to this container here, okay? Uh, width of 100%. Um, now, the reason I've done that, I've made it a div, not a block. Um, I played around with this. There's a reason. I can't remember what the reason was, but I had to set the width to 100%, otherwise it would shrink as our screen size shrunk. So width 100%, and our left, this is the magic here. Calculate our left width. So the lid, whatever the width of that box on the left hand side of there, plus our right offset, which by default is 50 pixels. So that's 50 pixels away from there. When we go down to 767, you can see that's now overlapping this because we've told it at 767 or less, we want that right offset to be minus 40 pixels. So that's going to move that from whatever that width is minus 40 pixels from the left and that's pretty much it and then we just position it to the bottom so that is the entire css pretty simple i think to make sure that this girl never collides with that content and i think it's a good way of doing it uh, i like it uh, if you like this sort of thing please hit the subscribe please hit the like and let us know what you think thank you